All right. So first things first, um, we wanted to make sure that you guys knew that um, Zoom has made some updates and changes for security purposes. So even from the last two, from two weeks ago when we had our last uh, Zoom lunch bites, the, they've already made probably what, five updates since then, maybe even more. They're going to continue to make these updates. So something I might show you today might look different in the fall or in two weeks. So we just wanna make sure that you guys know um, that Zoom is always updating most of the time for security purposes. Okay, any questions about that? Anybody notice that? You do something one time and then you go in, it doesn't work the same as it did the last time. Yeah, Maria and I noticed that all the time. This is not how it worked yesterday, okay? So the first thing we're gonna talk about is dual monitors. I had uh, quite a few people ask, how are we seeing um, Zoom on two different screens? How does it work? Um, without being able to show you the software, I've just got some screenshots here. Um, you're gonna go into the Zoom client, which is what you have downloaded on your computer. You'll click on your little picture on the top right, which is your profile picture. Um, and then go to settings, click the general tab, and then select dual monitors. Some of you may already have that. That's just, a, um, it's not default. So it's something you'll have to go in and, and do yourself if you've not done that before. This will allow you to see um, one screen of participants and then whoever's the active person or if there's screen share going on, you can see both things. It's not one or the other. Anybody have any questions about that? Okay. Marie, can you watch the chat? Because I have everything so small that I can't really see everything. I have a little laptop computer and then I've got my big screen. So everything is kind of mumble jumbled. Okay, cool. Moving on. Screen sharing. So, um, this has been a big question on is it what does it do why screen share what are our options and so i wanted to go through all of the different options that um you can do with screen sharing uh you can do the basics literally share one screen and it's going to show whatever you do on that screen you can do a whiteboard you can do all kinds of different things so i've got this little video set up to show and i'll walk you through what I'm doing because I didn't talk during this video. It's just a little screenshot of um, I'm the host. I click on share and I have all these different options. I'm going to go back a little bit because it went a little faster than I was expecting it to. There we go. So I have all these options um, that you can share whenever you click on that. You can either just choose to share your um, second screen, or you can share whatever software you have open, whether it's a web browser or an application, um, folders, whatever is open on your computer, you can choose those. So in the first option, I think I'm pretty positive I chose a browser. And it's going to show everything in that browser, but nothing else on that screen. This right here is your screen share bar. You can pause, share, um, annotate, move it around. So if it's in your way, which I've had that multiple times when I'm sharing, the, the bar gets in my way. Um, so, oops, oh, went a little far, one second. Previous slide, please. I clicked on the wrong thing. Have you guys ever done that? Okay, um, so you click on annotate and that's what it's gonna get to here in a minute. And you have all these different options to annotate. Let's get there, there we go. 
that bar right there has all your annotation options. So uh, we were in a meeting yesterday, I can't remember what it was, uh, the assessments meeting, Marie and I were in the assessment meeting and Steve, someone was annotating on <laughs> Marie's screen share. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and we never found out the culprit, but um, you can do text on whatever you're sharing. Um, you can do spotlights where it's like an arrow. It's going to sh like spotlight certain things. You can put the arrow wherever you want. It also has your name with it. So online campus is showing there because that's what my name was there. And you can close out of that share. Now I'm going on to sharing my screen. So this is now going to show anything that was on my second screen. So um, if I have something on my other screen and I want to move it over, I can move it over. Um, I can make things smaller, whatever. Everything that's on that screen, you're going to be sharing with your students. So I always prefer to just share the software that I'm going to be using because otherwise I get lost in whatever I'm sharing. Um, or I might lose something or I might share the screen that has my email on it and I don't want to do that. Okay. So see, I brought a Word document over from my other screen. Then you have whiteboard. I think a lot of, um, let's say maybe math teachers would use this option um, or anybody that needs to write and share. You can also use text, make lists. Um, this is a good place to brainstorm during a, a, a class. You've got your stamps again. So let's say you put, you wanted to um, put stars on a map or something when you're talking about stars. You can save, and this is gonna save uh, to your desktop. You also have the clear all drawings. This is something that Marie was doing yesterday when I was trying to uh, talk about my website. She was trying to clear viewer drawings. Um, you can also clear just all of them. You can clear your students or your participants' drawings, or you can clear just your drawings. Okay, those are just all the different options. Uh, I did, I, the select tool is something that you would use if you have something you need to move. So let's say you put something in a place that you didn't want, you move it that way. Um, the, the last part I'm going to show is the advanced portion. So um, sometimes you don't want to show the entire screen. You just want to show a portion. That's what this part is. You get to draw the area that you want to show or share. So um, I'm pretty sure when I clicked on that, it put a little square on my other screen. So I had to pull it over and um, where it's green, that's what it's gonna be showing, just that little spot. So that's really handy when you only have a certain area you want your students to see, or if you only have one screen, that's also super handy. Now, this is something we have not been able to test and I want to test it. I'm just not on campus, so I don't have that opportunity, but um, you can do, I would hope this is an Elmo, Marie. Do you know anything about this option? No. I haven't used it, but it does look like an Elmo. Yeah. Uh, I hope that's what that is, and I hope to test it soon because I think that would really be helpful for people trying to show something, um, and you can just hook it up to an Elmo. So I'll, I'll get back with you guys on that part, okay? So those are all the different ways to share, screen share. Does anybody have any questions about that? There's, I just gave you a bunch of random things about screen share, so I hope I didn't overload. No? Cool. Come on, get out of there. I do have a question. Can I ask or would you rather me chat? No, ask, yeah, 
Okay. okay, so on the whiteboard, I can make it so the students can write on the whiteboard mm -hmm. as well as me write on the whiteboard. Yep, and you can do that with any of your screen shares. And you can also make it to where students can't write as well. So like, okay, if you don't see. want people annotating, you can turn that off. Okay, that's just new to me, so I was curious. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. It makes it really, I think it's great for brainstorming or anything like that group work what is any the, other question maggie what is the default is it where everybody can write on it or yeah that's the default um let me see i have a question but it may be more specific to my classroom mm -hmm. you know i have a, a symposium in there and so i you know, use that and write on that um, and share that. Um, is it possible to, if you have a camera on your actual classroom whiteboard, to share that somehow, that camera showing the whiteboard? Um, yeah, if you're using a webcam, it would show the whiteboard instead of you. Um, yeah. I would just go into the screen sharing area to find out how to do that. Well, if you're going to use your webcam, you could just move it to the, to view the whiteboard, like move your camera to face the whiteboard. Um, or if you are, if you're connected, if the whiteboard is showing on your computer, you can share the screen that way. I feel like, how did uh, we do it the other day? When I have, but see, I have the symposium. Oh, sure. So I'm writing on that, and that's what it's like, you know, so the camera's on me as I'm writing and talking. Mm -hmm. But so my question is, if I have a, another camera, um, you know, like the overhead camera, mm -hmm. if that was pointing to my whiteboard in the classroom, could I change the screen share to show that? If I'm going to write on that board? Um, Marie, do you have any suggestions? I have not um, put the webcam onto the whiteboard to see what that would look like for people. So I think that's something that we might just need to test. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Like in a nursing situation, do they have like ca cameras? Well, I'm thinking like a specimen table where the camera would show what's on the specimen table so that students could see it. Would that be something that would, you know, or a like a, I don't know if you do cooking classes or home ec or whatever where the, somebody's demonstrating but the camera is actually on what they're preparing rather than yeah, um, just them. Is I that do know that Kathy Gordon has used uh, cameras in her drawing classes this summer to do similar things like that to show students how to draw. So I know uh, she's been using that so she might be a good person to uh, get some feedback on that on. Is that the Elmo that she's using, or is that a different camera? Do you know? Yeah, as far as I know, a different camera that okay. she uh, trained on her kind of drawing board, and then uh, students could could see her working. Okay. I think the Elmo would work very well for some of the things that R Ruth was um, asking about, um, especially if that item, that second camera, could be the Elmo. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we'll definitely be testing that and see what we can come up with. Not being on campus, I, I don't get to just run to a classroom and try it out. Someday, someday I'll be on campus. Someday soon. Yes. I need out of my house. Um, okay. So uh, one more thing before I move on from screen sharing, uh, the student screen sharing options is defaulted to no, only the host. Um, so if you are going to be in a situation where your students need to share, 
you'll go down to the um, screen share button and um, you'll choose, there's an up carrot and you can choose, uh, I can't see it right now because I'm sharing, but um, allows all participants to screen share, I believe is what it says. So if you, if you have not done that, nobody else can share. Right, Marie? It's in the, uh, when you click that up carrot, there's an advanced sharing options that you have to go to. And then there's the question, who can share? Only the host or all participants. Right. And Thank there's you. some other questions related to that as well, but that's the main one. Switch to the slide. All right, let me get off of annotate, which is why, no wonder my um, mouse wasn't working. <laughs> All right, um, so yes, I, that was another update from Zoom that we kind of, it kind of just happened. We're like, why can't I share? Oh, I'm not the host. Oh, we have to allow participants. So that was one of those situations. They, up, they did that um, for security purposes. I had some people ask, how do you use PowerPoint? share air presentations in Zoom. Um, I create a PowerPoint as normal. I launch the PowerPoint just like I would in class. And then I share my screen um, on the monitor that I'm sharing the presentation. It's, it's very similar to how you would do it in a classroom. I just wanted to make sure I went over that for those of you that may use PowerPoints during your classes. And obviously, you do not have to share it right away. You can or op launch your presentation right away. It can be launched when you're in the middle of your um, Zoom meeting. It's just, Maggie? yeah. I'm sorry, Maggie. I was <clears throat> um, doing a PowerPoint presentation in a meeting. And it was like the first one I'd ever done. And I couldn't get my slides to move forward. Interesting. I'm just clicking on the slide like I would because it's just it's just on my dual on my second monitor and I shared with the entire monitor. Um, when you did your screen share, what did you choose for to share? Well, I, I didn't know that we could have dual monitors in Zoom. Oh. So at that time, I didn't. Okay. So I mean, this was like early on in this <laughs> when we went to um, uh, online. So if, if, I, if I select dual monitors and have the participants on one monitor and my PowerPoint on one, then the PowerPoint should uh, progress forward as normal? You should be able to manipulate it just like you would um, normally. Like I'm just going through my slide like I would if I was projecting up on a wall or on a, on a screen. Um, so without knowing how you were sharing that. I'm not really sure why it wasn't uh, working properly. It's strange. I, I may just have to play with it and see what yeah. happens. Let me know. I can help too. If we can, if we want to get together, I can help you with that. Okay. I hate to ask a real basic question, but is there a physical connection between your monitors? Or is that like a Bluetooth or? Uh, well, I have mine hooked up. Uh, I brought one of our TVs in here and I used an HDMI cord from my laptop to my TV. Um, and so it just depends on how your monitor needs to be hooked up. Most of the time there's going to be a hard wire between the monitors. Am I right? Yeah, right. most of them have docking stations for dual monitors. Especially college issued, but it's possible. It's an interesting question from Ruth because perhaps some of our adjunct instructors have Bluetooth monitors. I don't have any experience with that myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I have not had the ability to use Zoom with a situation like that. My first thought is that it's going to, Zoom is going to see whatever your computer sees. And if it, your computer knows you have two monitors, Zoom's gonna see the two monitors, Bluetooth or hardwire. That's my first inclination. But like Maria, I don't have experience with that. Maggie, when you're recording, uh, is there a way to control what your the, the Zoom is recording the PowerPoint versus the other screen if you've got the dual monitors? 
So when you're recording and you're doing a screen share, uh, like right now, um, which I hope I'm recording. I think I am. Yes, you are. Um, okay, <laughs> thank you. It's going to show my PowerPoint as the main screen. And then whoever is talking, like right now I have the green box around mine. I'll be up in the right hand corner just in a little tiny square. And then like when you talk, your, your video would show up there. Also, uh, is it true that, uh, going back to Christy's question, if she has dual monitors set up and she's showing a PowerPoint, um, her if she has a mouse on the screen with the, the little images of all of us, uh, then she's not controlling the PowerPoint at that point. Am I right that what she's clicking on would be for that other monitor? Right. She'll need to click on the PowerPoint to manipulate the PowerPoint and make sure and click through it because um, your mouse is only going to work on whatever you're clicking on from what I've, because I'm sharing the full screen. That's what I've found. That makes sense. Um, any other questions about that? No? All right. So the next one is polls, and I've got a little video here. The reason why I have two of these in here, um, I wanted to show you what these things can do, and it's hard to do that when I'm in Zoom. So I went to zoom.us support and found a cool little video on how to do these things. Um, and they're able to show us what it looks like. So uh, it's like two minutes, I think. Hey everyone, Farrah from Zoom here. On this short video, we're gonna review polling for your in-meeting experience or your virtual classroom. As the host, you can see that I already have a polling button built into the toolbar along the bottom. And when I click this, this will give me the ability to launch any polls that I've already set up between world history and US presidents in this example. When I'm ready to launch this poll for my class, I'll click launch poll button, and then I'll be able to keep track in real time as my participants are responding to the poll. So we can see here we have two questions uh, basically around some of the wars from previous centuries, and we can see as the responses start coming in, I can see two out of seven people have responded. Um, and there's a timer up top too, so I can tell everybody this is a pop quiz. We have 10 more seconds for you to get your answers in. And then once those answers are completed, I can click end poll. And we'll just go with what we have here. And so I can see um, that 60% of my class uh, said 1914 for World War I, and that uh, also 60% said Otto von Bismarck. What I can do from here is share the results to the class so they can see what the results are as well. And although this doesn't tell me who answered what, I can pull the report after the meeting has concluded to actually see who in my class uh, responded correctly to the answer. When I click stop sharing, I will have the opportunity to relaunch the poll. It's very important to note here that if you relaunch a poll, it starts it from scratch, starts it from zero, and there's no way to pull that report from the first, uh, the first poll that you launched. So please keep that in mind. Now I've pre-created this poll, I've already added it from uh, directly from the website. I'll share uh, the web page here so you can see where you can find polling. From any meeting you've already scheduled, all you need to do is scroll to the bottom of the page to see any polls you've already created. You can edit them here and you can also add additional polls here. Hope this video was helpful and gets you off to the right foot um, starting polls with your classrooms or your in-meeting experience. If you have any other questions, please check out our support page at support.zoom.us um, and have a great day. Thanks everyone. Okay, so um, that kind of showed you in a blurry way <laughs> what uh, it looks like when you're in the Zoom meeting. Um, you click the little button at the bottom that says polls. And um, if you already created a poll on zoom.us like she showed, um, the little box like this will show your poll. If you click on, um, if you don't have a poll and this is what you see and you click on add question or edit, it's going to open up zoom.us 
take you to that meeting and automatically put you in the poll settings and have you create the question, edit the title of the poll, um, all of those things. Once you click save and um, you're done in zoom.us, it'll automatically populate this um, poll window in your current open active meeting. See it populated it. I was testing this earlier. Um, gave it the poll title and the questions. Uh, launch your poll. This is what it's going to look like. Tells you how long it's been going. Um, and then when you click end pool polling, it gives you the option to share your poll results with your um, class with your Zoom meeting. Okay. It's pretty, you can't create the poll necessarily within just the software client. You've got, it'll, it'll send you to zoom.us, but it will populate it instantly after you're done creating it. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that? No. And you can have multiple polls per meeting too. Um, and if you have those created already before your uh, class or meeting time, it'll give you a list of which poll you would like to run during that meeting time. And you can run however many you want, and reset them however many times. Um, she said that you can look at the reporting of the polls to find out who responded with what answers. Um, I have not been able to test that yet. Uh, most of the time they've been anonymous and so one of the things I want to do is get into a meeting and, and see how it works like that. So that's do the, coming. Do the students see what other students are responding to the poll or just the instructor? Or like, could you use this for maybe a quick quiz or something? So unless you want your students to see what answers were given, they won't see anything. They, you won't even know who answered what until you go look at reporting. So um, right here it says number one first question. You can see that like if 20% of people answered this is and the 80% did right answer, you could only see that and if you share your results with the students, they'll only see that as well. They won't see who. Does that answer your question? I think so. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions on polling? No? Breakout rooms. Okay. Um, breakout rooms to me started out as such a small thing and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more options. <laughs> the more we do it, the more we find out about it. Um, so what I might, what I tell you today might be completely different than what you've seen before or we'll see in the next couple weeks because um, I mean, I've been using breakout rooms for a little bit and I still last night we found stuff that I was like, huh, interesting. Um, so, what I'm going to show you is, I believe, a little video. Hopefully it's not so blurry. Video breakout rooms allow Zoom users to easily place meeting attendees into sub-meetings for group discussion, activities, projects, and more. To get you should not have to do this, this um, thing that it's doing right now, which is telling you to make sure breakout rooms are turned on. I think we've turned that on across the board. So this little two second bit right here, you should not have to do. Get started, log in at zoom.us and view the meeting settings section. Click to edit advanced settings and make sure that breakout rooms is checked. The next time you host a Zoom meeting, you will see the breakout rooms button at the bottom of the Zoom panel. While you are sharing your screen, the button is under the More menu. Click here to start using breakout rooms. Zoom will show the number of eligible participants. Choose how many rooms to create and let Zoom assign the participants automatically 
or choose to manually assign for more control, as we'll demonstrate here. Create breakout rooms to proceed. Your breakout rooms are now available and participants are still in the main meeting. Float your mouse over the breakout room to rename or delete the room. Click to assign participants, check their names, and click assign again. Do this for each breakout room. Your participants are now assigned. If you want to change an assignment, float your mouse over participant name where you can move the participant to another room or exchange the participant with someone already assigned to another room. When you're ready, click to open all rooms. This will cause your participants to automatically move into their assigned breakout room. The list will indicate that participants have successfully connected when the gray dot turns green. Meeting participants will be prompted to join breakout rooms where they can speak on audio, show their webcams, share screen, and chat as normal. They can also ask for help to send a prompt to the meeting host. Participants can also choose to leave the breakout room anytime to be returned to the main meeting. Return to the breakout rooms list as the host and you can choose to join any of the breakout rooms to offer assistance. You can broadcast a message to participants and a banner will be displayed. This is great for instructions or timing announcements. Again, float your mouse over a participant name to move the participant. When you are ready, close the breakout rooms. Participants will have 60 seconds to finish their discussion and will be returned to the main meeting. Open the breakout rooms menu again to quickly reopen the same breakout rooms or to make new assignments. To learn more, visit zoom.us forward slash live training to register for. Okay. Um, so some of the stuff that they said in that video is also settings that you can set like the timing, um, students being automatically uh, moved to um, the rooms. So when you're in your meeting, this is what you can see with your options. If you click on options, you'll have move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. So if you don't really want to give them the option to join or not join, you can select this and it will automatically disperse them. When you say open all rooms, it'll send them. Um, if that's unchecked, they'll get the little box that says join room. Allow participants to return to the main session at any time. That's automatically selected. Um, the, if it's not selected, then they won't be able to come back until you've turned breakout rooms off. They can leave the meeting, I believe. They just can't come back to the main session. Uh, breakout rooms close automatically after 30 minutes. So I believe they use this in the uh, board meetings where you know they only have a certain amount of time. And so the executive, executive session is only 20 minutes long. So they only get 20 minutes. So they can change, you can change the time there. Um, or you can not have it selected and it will be open as long as you need the breakout rooms to be open. Um, if you do have that selected, there will, there will be an option to notify me when the time is up. Um, you can select that. Uh, and then you have countdown after closing the break room, breakout room. Um, so I messed around with that a little bit. Whenever the, the breakout room is, you tell the, you tell the session that the breakout rooms are done, it'll give them 60 seconds to come back or will automatically bring them back in 60 seconds. Like 60 seconds are up and they haven't come back to the main session, it will automatically bring them back. You can change that to however long you want, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, those kinds of things. Any questions on that? Does that work with the timer? So if your meeting is closing after 10 minutes, will they get a one minute warning? Yes, that's what I found. Also, um, when you are using a countdown, if you have the automatically close in a set amount of time, the people in the breakout room will see the time remaining. Mm -hmm. well. I believe it's at the top of the screen. Is that right? So I don't, I don't use the countdown timer setting and the close automatically at the same time, because if you have the close automatically after a designated, um, amount of time, they're getting a countdown already. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 
Any other questions about those options? Nope. Oh, and I was just going to show, um, I actually did not know a lot about the message that you could broadcast from the main session to all your breakout rooms. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and then this is how it would show up on their screen. It would be a blue banner. If they are on their phone though, I tested this today. Uh, if they're on the phone app, uh, it'll actually show up on their screen kind of like a text message with the um, profile picture of the host. So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, just making sure. Oh, I was going to show you guys, I kind of passed this over whenever we went to the video, um, or at least talked to you guys about, um, you can set up breakout rooms before a meeting on zoom.us. Um, that I believe is how Marie did it yesterday for our assessments meeting. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of trial and error yesterday. <laughs> Uh, but how do you feel like that worked for you, Marie? Well, I think if you realize that you have, that it brings up a pop-up window, and then you also, after you're done, have to scroll to the bottom and click a save button. So if you do the save button, I think it works very well. Um, I, I, popul I pre-populated the disciplines because we knew the disciplines that were going to meet. Um, and I pre-populated a couple email addresses from people that I knew would be there. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's very difficult, I think, to put all of the participants in the breakout rooms before because you don't know who all is going to attend. But it did save some time, um, you know, a, a few minutes anyway, of creating the breakout rooms themselves. I, uh, I messed around with it today a little bit. And um, you can, once you create the room, you can, like, like I, st I started typing in Marie and it automatically said Marie Gardner and I was like sure and I clicked on her then I went to the next one I believe I tried Kyle Burris yep that's who I want you know and so if you already have them like if it's in the system then it's going to recognize their names or you can just put their email addresses in the um, participants section let's see All right, I think that's all I had as far as breakout rooms go. Any questions on that? No? Okay. The next thing I'm going to talk about is registration for meetings. So um, this is what you guys did to sign up for this is registered through Zoom. I thought this would be really cool for, you know, let's say you have a class where your students have an option of going to when we used to be in school and get, got to do road trips and stuff. You know, you need to go to the zoo and you need to, to do this as one of your assignments or you can, or you can go do this or you can do this. Well, if you have like optional meeting times and you want to have them sign up for them, you can use this registration option because then you'll know who's signed up or who hasn't, if you have a certain, if you need to check those off. Um, office hours, I thought this was cool for office hours too, um, because they, you, you would know then that they need to have a meeting with you because it sends you an email, so-and-so signed up for office hours, uh, instead of just sitting in your office, office meeting, uh, waiting for someone to come, they can sign up for it. Um, the thing I liked about it too is that you can have questions besides just name and email address. You can put any kind of questions in there, just like I had, I believe, do you have any tips and tricks to share? I believe is the question I had on our registration here. Um, it allows you to put whatever questions you want to put in there. And I think that would be beneficial for like, let's say office hours, what time do you want to meet? And they can say from two to two thirty. Stuff like that. Um, these are set up in zoom.us. 
Um, it sends an email. I just pulled this from, but I have them sent to the online campus because the Zoom that I use is the online at miyoto.edu. And so whatever I set up is going to go through that email. So I get an email saying, Kyle Burris has registered for Lunch Bites Zoom for Classroom Part 2. Um, and then I can go look at that registration, see the answers um, that he may have given, and you can make them optional or required. And it will save that information for um, later, whenever you want to look at it, like even after the meeting time has passed, if you need to refer back, it saves it in your uh, meetings. I was hoping I could bring that up. There it goes. I have found that I love this. I think it's great. Let's see. So let's go to Tech Talks from last, from Tuesday. Um, you've got your registration down here because I chose to have a registration required. So it automatically populates this little tab down here at the bottom of your meeting. Um, shows that I have five people registered. If I click on view, it shows me those people. If I click on the name, it shows me their answers. Um, it's supposed to, but it's being really slow. There we go. So if anybody would have answered these questions, it would show the answer there. This also, I'm assuming you guys got the, I, I haven't been on the receiving end of this. The registration email gives you the link, right? To come to the meeting. Um, there's um, also, Peggy. yeah. Um, I seem to get like two or three emails um, about like if I read, like when I registered, um, you know, when you sent the one email out where you could register, I did that. And then later I got another email saying about the session and whether I wanted to accept coming to the meeting or not. And then it seemed like the day of it, I got another one asking if I wanted to come to the meeting or not. And it was like, I'm getting like three emails all asking, requesting me to come to the meeting when I already registered initially for it. I'm sorry about that. So it doesn't connect the way I want it to with our um, calendars. Um, so, and let, I mean, this is a trial and error kind of thing for me too. So why you're getting three uh, emails is because one, you registered. Two, I added you to the online uh, calendar event, so that way it goes on your calendar. Um, and that way on the day of, the reason why you got your third one today, I can post the link in case you somehow lost your email um, that had the link in it. So that's why you got the three um, emails. Now, if you guys, uh, you guys are going to be my people that give feedback. So if you don't think I need to be sending out a, a calendar invite, I won't. I, it just made it easy for me to put the link of the Zoom meeting in that calendar invite and then it sends it to you guys that day so that way you have the uh, link. So I, I am all for any kind of feedback you guys have for me in this situation because this is all new for everyone and so um, I'm just doing whatever I think works and I'm not on the receiving end so I don't, I don't know what gets annoying and what doesn't, <laughs> so. Well, um, what I, it seemed like though, like, um, you know, when you sent out the, the email that talked about, you know, the, the week's online things and where you can click uh, the register, it says registration, you click on it and you can register then for um, the activity. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like though, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like that has the link in it when you register. Um, I mean, is it, does it, it goes to our outlook when you register, but it doesn't seem to have a link in it. Um, I didn't put, I don't put the link in until the day of, so you should have received a updated uh, out or invitation outlook invitation for your calendar that had the link in it today. Right. Did you guys get that? Yeah. yeah. So I, that's, you know, I, 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 I got that. But mm -hmm. so, I mean, I guess for me, 
I would rather just get one invite to a meeting and have the link in that and that's all I want need to do. And um, I guess that means I just shouldn't register whenever you send out what's going to happen this week and just wait. Because I, uh, I prefer only get one and not have to see it three times. Sure. I mean, that's my preference. I don't, maybe others like to get, get all three. So. It's, it's completely up to you. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I suggest registering whenever the email comes out, just because I don't want you to forget. Um, and then if you want to uh, let me know in the comments section of the registration, which I can put this in the registration, um, something like let me know if you don't want the calendar invite. And then that way you don't get multiple emails. And um, you'll only get that one email, which it means you registered. Whenever you complete the registration, it will send you the email and that's where you'll have your link and all that stuff. If you think that would work. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I don't, I mean, I you guess. You know what I can, I can put in the registration, <laughs> send me an invite, uh, Outlook invite. How about that? And then that way, if you don't select that, I won't send you an invite and then you won't get multiple emails from me for that registration. How about that? But will I, when, when will I get the link for the meeting? It'll send it to you in the initial email, like, so you'll mm -hmm. register for the event and right after you register, you get an email and that email will include the link. I just usually send out uh, an additional link just in case people have, it's because it, I could see it being a junk mail off accidentally and um, I want to make sure people come. So I send out the link uh, in the calendar invite. But I don't want to be clogging up your email. So that's why I want to make sure I, I give you guys options. I'm just jotting this down real quick so I don't forget. Okay. Thank you for that. Anything else on registrations? No? I was pretty excited when I found out Zoom had registrations. I think it's pretty cool. All right, let's go back to here. So um, last thing that I was gonna talk about is ending your meeting. Um, Sometimes you may be in a situation where you are ready to end the meeting for yourself. Like you want to leave, but you want to leave your students there to have group time or whatever. Um, you can assign a student to be a host to stay, or if you have a teaching assistant or, or somebody in charge of a group, whatever, you can choose that person to be in charge of the meeting after you've left. And that's where you'll do it. Um, at the end, you'll go down to end. When you click on that, you get two options, end meeting for all, which means it just closes down. You are kicked out. Or you can assign and leave, which means you're going to assign the host uh, for the rest of that meeting. And then uh, I believe once the meeting has ended, you go back to being the host again. Is that correct, Marie? Are you talking about like the next instance of a recurring yeah. meeting? Yes, mm -hmm. you would become the host when you started it again. Okay. Yeah, because I know that that's been uh, a question. Like if I assign someone a host as I'm leaving the meeting, when we open that meeting back up after it's closed, am I going to be the host again? And yes, that is a great question. Um, Maggie, the yeah. question I have on that, and I just haven't played with it, it appears if I am the host and I leave a meeting that Zoom auto assigns a random participant to become the host. Have you had a chance to play with that to see if you can pick someone else? No, I have not. Maybe Christy has. I actually did this morning. Oh. Um, we 
uh, some uh, some faculty in the clinical pra the practicum fact faculty were meeting for to prepare the calendar for next fall, and um, a group of them wanted to stay, and I was leaving, and I couldn't leave because, and I'm like what, and so I was able to assign one of them host, and I left. So did you assign the host before you went to the end meeting? Because no. I know you can do that. No, because I didn't know I was going to need to do that, so I did it after. I'm like, uh, I can't leave. And and, and yeah. Jackie said, make me the host. So I went and made her the host and then I could leave. So. so to me, if you want choice, you make someone the host and then you leave the meeting. But if you go to that end, it's going to auto assign someone. I'm not seeing that um, because yeah. when it you didn't click, auto assign if, anybody. You choose, if you choose leave, this is what you get you're going to get the option, assign and leave. I don't think you have the option to, to just leave. So they may have changed that. No, I'm saying when you, when you click that end button and you assign, they randomly, Zoom randomly picks someone else who's on the call. Do oh. you have the option to change that at that point? Wait. I haven't looked at that long enough. I just say whoever it pops up is fine for what I'm doing. But I haven't if, missed. If you want control, of who becomes the host, you could assign host through participants or through the gallery view, and then right. you would be able to quietly leave the meeting and not get prompted whether yep. you want to end for everyone or not. Now I know what you mean. I don't yep. know because she was the only person in my meeting, so I don't know. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it assigned who I wanted it to assign. So, If you click on that name, does it do anything or would it bring up a list or a pop-up menu and have other names that you could pick? Um, I'm going to test that when we end the meeting today. You could probably test it now if you back out. It. Can't you back out of it if you want to cancel instead of ending? Let me see. Maybe. Oh, I can choose whoever I want. Oh, you can choose there. It did, like, because you're a co-host of this meeting, it, it has you checkmarked, uh, like, first. Uh -huh. But I can choose anyone in this meeting to be. So how are you doing that? Do you click on my name like Ruth asked? Mm -mm. No, when I clicked on leave, just like over in this little video, uh, I clicked on leave now. It popped up with assign a new host and it has the list. Okay. I think that Zoom has changed that recently. I agree. It used to say this is your person that's going to become the host. Right. Right. Um, and I never tried to click on them to see, but so that's good news. You could do it either way then. Yes, I am going to show you real quick. See, that's what I see. Can you see it? Yeah, okay. I thought that was cool. See, you learn something new every day. If I can get this off. All right. Any questions about that? Does anybody have any tips and tricks to go along with this session? I have another question about recording. Okay. When you get done with recording, where does that recording live? Is it in the cloud somewhere and is it a huge file? Is it something that can be posted to my, my Neo show? What, what so happened? I believe Kevin is the one that I stole my information from because I think he talked about it in the last one. So Kevin, if you want to explain what you do, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure. Um, when you hit record, you have the option of uh, recording it to your hard drive and it is a big file. Uh, it's very hard to share files that large with students. So I have gone to uh, recording it to the cloud. And so after you do that, a few minutes it takes to process, you will get an email with two links. Uh, one link is for you to uh, go to your recording and uh, download it yourself if you want to edit anything. Uh, the other is a link that you share with students. Uh, and that's the link I've used to set up assignments, a basic assignment where I just, uh, hey, our Zoom meeting from uh, today is here. If you uh, had to leave or missed it, uh, you can review what we talked about. And uh, 
recently, I think after some security upgrades, uh, that, that email comes with a password that the students can enter as well uh, to access that recording. So it's worked pretty good. I did have a fluke earlier this week. Um, I didn't get the email about uh, my recordings, but I went in later and my recordings were there. So I guess their system was down or uh, for some reason I didn't get the email. Normally you get an email just a few minutes uh, after it processes uh, your recording. And uh, there's, there's it, since it's stored in their cloud, there's not that issue of big files and trying to share with students that way. How long did we find out um, it was a certain amount of space that you have before it starts um, removing files, right? I couldn't remember what that number was. I don't remember either. I think uh, if you look. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry. I think if you look on your Zoom. Ah, you're muted again. I keep uh, muting. Uh, yeah. When I went to, you know, where you join a meeting, uh, there is an option there for recordings and you can mm -hmm. get to it there as well. I don't remember seeing anything about storage capacity, but it's probably there. I just haven't uh, run into any issues yet with all the recordings I've done so far. Okay. Um, because I believe it, you have the option to do, to get an MP4 from the recording. And so like I'm trying the whole record to cloud today and then I'm going to pull the MTP4 off, put it into Camtasia so I can edit or whatever and then put it on YouTube. Um, so that's it exactly, doesn't disappear. That's exactly what I uh, had to do. I recorded a session and forgot to stop recording. And then uh, it recorded a private conversation I had with a student about a, a problem in class. I definitely didn't want anybody everybody to hear that so I had to download the mp4 chop that out of there and then re-upload it to YouTube so that's always there when you use that uh, first link that, that comes in your email perfect thank you any other tips and tricks or questions I think you kind of addressed this but you you went by it before I knew what I was supposed to do. When I'm sharing, I lose my chat. I can't find it. Can okay. you show me? I think you did that a little bit ago, but it went real quick and I wasn't sure where I was supposed to be. Um, let me see here. Um, Typically, I find when I lose things that are normally in that big bar, mm -hmm. uh, and usually you're right, Pam, it's when you're sharing, I typically find that they're in the more Yep. or uh, the three dots. Sometimes I have to click on three dots to get more options. It depends on what window I'm looking at. So it's up at the top, then that where that bar jumps to the top when you're sharing. Uh, mine does jump to the top, the, the floating okay. menu, but at the right hand side of it, Maggie, can you see it now? Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's under the more section of your sharing panel uh, and at the top. And then whenever you click on it, it it's just a window. And so let me see if I accidentally uh, put it behind something. Because it stays on top of everything Zoom if it's open. And then if I close out of it, you have to go back to more. So yeah, just go to the more section of your share panel and then click on chat. And that'll pop give you a pop up of the chat. But um, also to add to that, if you are using the multiple uh, dual monitor setting and you have your chat in a separate window and your participants are in a separate window, your breakout rooms are in a separate window, there's at the very bottom, uh, there's three little dots and a little oval. And that's actually a menu, but they almost, um, you know, just are not visible. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Revol resolve, resolve into the background. I don't know, um, but they're there and they are a menu. So you can look for the three dots or the more depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? 
Well, we have um, concourse next Wednesday. Um, and then we don't have anything set up for June yet, but I will be updating the instructional support tab with a June calendar in June. <laughs> Um, if you guys have any suggestions of what you would like to learn about, let me know and I can put something together. Um, and just like I said before, any kind of feedback is welcome. I'd love to know what you guys think about the registration process, um, any kind of communication I have with you guys. I would love to know so that way I make it better for you guys. Okay. Thank and you. this was great. Good, good. If you guys have any questions, email online at neoshow.edu or you can email me. Uh, it's easier to go to online because in case I don't get it, someone will. So, okay. Awesome. Well, I took you three minutes over, so I'll let you go now. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Maggie. you for coming. Bye.